and what is it's Anna also known as that Star Wars girl and today we're gonna be talking about uh, Lucasfilm's latest project so uh, I found this over at Disney Star Wars is done by the one and only itchy Baka. the link for it is in the description of this video I'm not gonna read everything here in this blog but I am going to talk about the most important things in it so as you can tell by the headline Lucasfilm uh, Bezos I think that's how you pronounce it uh, join forces with communist China so if that didn't get to your attention, I don't know what will. So remember, uh, before we get into it and we talk about what really is uh, going on, what this project is about, let's just remember what uh, has happened in the past when Disney and Lucasfilm decide to market things to a Chinese audience. Disney is all about preaching, about inclusivity, ending racism, being pro-LGBTQ+, but then when you actually look at their actions and what they do, it's like, you know actions speak louder than words and their words are falling flat because it's not reflective of what they're actually doing what they're actually doing is telling you oh hey look we're gonna have you know a black man be one of the main characters in star wars and all of us star wars fans are like well that that's already been done You're like this isn't new you know there's there's lando hello that was one of the main characters in Star Wars. He was introduced in Empire Strikes Back, and he's the one that blew up the second Death Star. So there's nothing new about, you know, a black man being a lead in a Star Wars movie, but they like to act like that was the bestest ever and they had never been done before. And so even when you can see the, on the American audience poster, see how big Finn is. Like, so it, it's Ray, or it's Kylo Ren, then it's Ray, then it's Finn. Even Han and Leia are small. BB-8 is almost non-existent. Poe is, you know, tiny. But then when you look at the poster for the Chinese audience, what's Kylo Ren doing? He's looking straight at you. Rey has shrunk. Han and Leia have gotten bigger. Finn, it's like, where the heck is Finn? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. He's right here. He's teeny, teeny, tiny right here. They completely got rid of Poe, and they made our er, BB-8, you know all big and central and then they you know made the ships a little bit bigger and adjusted them so already it's like well you guys preached about inclusivity so why did you shrink you know the the black character to be you know this one of the smallest ones in the poster that doesn't seem very inclusive that doesn't seem very progressive does it <clears throat> excuse me so again actions speak louder than words and look at uh, just by their actions how much they actually care about diversity ending racism being inclusive they don't when they're marketing to a Chinese audience. So uh, let's get down here. So they are working with uh, China Literature. And so this is their little promo video. Now it's about three minutes long. I'm not gonna play it. Uh, the, the link for this blog is in the description of this video if you want to go watch it uh, for yourself. And the link for this video will also be there uh, as well. But so uh, one of the reasons why I'm not gonna play all of it, again, it's almost three minutes long, but also a majority of it is in Chinese. And so there are uh, translation on on the bottom but I figured it would just be easier for me to summarize since I did I did watch it so they kind of talk about how they are going to now be telling they're they're collaborating with uh, China literature to tell new Star Wars stories that take place in a section of the Star Wars universe with aliens and a certain type of you know ethnicity from you know our, our Earth. Even though Star Wars takes place in a galaxy far, far away, it is going to uh, incorporate, uh, you know, just specifically Asian characters and more specifically Chinese characters. And so the, uh, the writer for this is going to be Chinese. Which, I mean, that's pretty straightforward since it's, you know, they're working with China literature and it's going to be uh, in Chinese. So I, that would make sense that you have a Chinese writer uh, doing it. So that way, uh, you know, the, the you know you don't have a, an American that, you know, translating over to Chinese. It, you know, it just, that, that actually is very logical out of everything that they are doing here. But so it is going to be led by uh, a Chinese character. Let me see if I can find him. Chinese Jedi named Sean. 
So this is Sean. He is a uh, Jedi Padawan, and he is going to be the leader of, or I guess the the main character in this book. Sean. Sean is the new Star Wars Chinese character. Now, I don't have a problem with any ethnicity being the lead in a Star Wars movie or book because it, it doesn't matter. If anything, I would feel like at this point in the timeline, even though it's a galaxy far, far away, I would think that it would more be comparable to if you guys ever read the novels of Ringworld. In Ringworld, the main character is an Asian man, but it's very, he, he even specifically when you know the author is describing him and you know it's the characters in her monologue when he speaks about himself is that there's just a hint of you know his Asian past in his eyes because at this point in the future everyone is so mixed that you know you can't really tell your background or your ethnicity because again everyone is so everyone's so mixed it's not just oh you're this you're this you're that it's you know, very much a mixed culture because the world has united as one and people have moved past that. But uh, th that's what I would actually think of in the Star Wars universe at this point since, you know, uh, based on how many humans there are in the galaxy and the way that things work and with the way that people travel and whatnot. That to me made more logical sense than anything else they've done. But uh, it is what it is with Disney Star Wars. I, I just, at this point, it's like, well, what, what else are you going to throw? What else, uh, you know... You're, you're being inclusive, you're being for, you know, the forefront of this movement, but then, you know, your actions don't match your words, and your words don't match your actions, and the logic just isn't there. You guys are going to do something new that nobody's ever seen before. It's like, oh, an Asian character is going to be the lead. Again, they did that, like, back in the 60s with Ringworld. I mean, I mean it's done countless times, but... Whatever. Whatever. So, uh, he is going to be the lead. I think the art for this is actually very nice. Uh, and so there, let me go read a little bit more. So, uh, this just kind of goes into how, you know, the, the guy, the, uh, Edward Jing, I, I don't, uh, I don't think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I apologize. But so he is also uh, the president of Tencent and a chief executive officer over at Tencent Pictures, which plans to do a film celebrating the Chinese Communist Party. So they're doing a movie uh, based on the 100th year anniversary of, you know, the Communist Party taking over China. So that's promising. And then, uh, so this is a little bit more uh, in depth uh, that they talk about what their plans are for this book. Uh, and also, by the way, it is not being translated into English. It is only going to be available in Chinese. Luckily, though, there are, you know, Chinese people in America and Chinese people throughout the world that are able to translate this. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, uh, how well that, that does translate. Now, my cousin's wife, she is actually from China. And so, I mean, if I wanted to get her to translate it, I probably could just ask her. Uh, this distant star, uh, system says Wang is a uniquely Chinese corner of the Star Wars universe. Although populated by some recognizable races from the Star Wars universe, like Twi'leks, Rodians, Wookiees, and, um, and the like, it mostly consists of a race of humans with black hair and dark eyes, whose given names, space, food, architecture, values, culture, and habits reflect those of the Chinese. Even if it's not earth food or earth beef, beef maybe the way it's cooked or the way its name will instantly make you think of Chinese food, says Wing, like braising in water or stewing in soy sauce. Now, one of the like things about Star Wars is it's it's like kind of like with Luke and the blue milk. So you're on Tatooine and you know they're sitting there they're having a meal and Luke has blue milk. So obviously our minds were like okay he's drinking milk. Be I mean it, it just it makes sense but it's blue because it's different because it's an alien thing. So you can do this. It's completely fine to do something like this and, you know, have, oh, maybe this is like their sauce, give it a, give it a name. And you can be, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, sly about it and have it be like an anagram for soy sauce or something like that. And then have it be, I don't know, neon orange or something like that. And so, I mean, there's a way to do this and to do it in a clever way. So that that's not exactly, you know, the worst thing about this concept. I think the fact that they're leading in with a, uh, like the Asian character and his name is Sean. I mean, you're you're dealing with a universe where it's Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, Padme, Anakin, you know, Count Dooku, just names that, you know, aren't typically names that you would find on our planet, but they chose one of the most generic 
white names out there, which is Sean. So the the, the Chinese character, what's his name? Sean. <laughs> it's like you could have come up with like something a little bit cooler than that. And uh, like, like, like this, our protagonist is a Padawan named Sean. <laughs> It's like, what? It's like, if you're gonna go the Chinese route and have all of your characters be Chinese and whatnot, it's like, all, all right, you know, I guess you do you guys. I mean, you're not translating into English. We all, without me saying it to get my channel in trouble or to get myself in trouble, um, we all know what this is about and the, the intentions behind it and what the, the, the true purpose is of it. But, uh, wouldn't you be a little bit more clever and name him something other than Sean? I, I think that that is probably one of the most ridiculous things out of this, aside from the fact that there's, I, I guess, a little sect of the Star Wars universe, which takes place in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, there's, there's a little, basically little mini China in the Star Wars universe, which I feel like that could also lead into their Disney parks, and they're trying to say, oh, well, this is, you know, the, the Chinese section of the Star Wars galaxy, that's why at our, you know, Disney, Disneyland's in China, that's why it's all Chinese, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is, I don't want to say any more with, uh, because I don't want to get myself in trouble and, you know, magically disappear, so, uh, <laughs> that's as far as I'm going to go with this, if you want to go read the rest of this article, it is in the description of this video. Again, thank you and shout out to Ichibaka and uh, Jar Jar Abrams for the article and in this video. Again, the links are in the description of this video. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay too. Thank you so much for watching this far through. And everyone, have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. What's up, everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and I have an Etsy store, so if you've ever wanted to own a print of my artwork, this is the place to go. As you can see, I have a lot of recognizable characters, from horror films, to heroes, to Star Wars characters. Some of the notable characters I have on here are Darth Vader, which I did a couple live streams painting, so you can own a print of this painting. I also have Luke Skywalker, the binary sunset version, one of my favorite scenes in the original New Hope movie. I have Darth Maul, which Ray Parks himself actually complimented me on Instagram. And then last but certainly not least, Ahsoka Tano. So if you want to own any of these prints, go right on over to my Etsy store. Again, that's the art of Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day.